Hey, church family, this is Pastor Dallas Billington. We're glad that uh, you're with us. Here we are another week. Hopefully we heard some good news and uh, we're on a downhill swing, hopefully uh, uh, past the, the curve and hopefully it's starting to flatline with this horrible virus our, <clears throat> our whole country and uh, really the whole world has experienced. And, uh, you know, I want to share a couple things, kind of like an update of even last week, you know, as I was sharing at the beginning of the message last week, how that... Uh, uh, the the attorneys that were meeting a video conference with the uh, uh, judge and how he had to reprimand them because as they were speaking from home, they were uh, improperly dressed. Well, uh, I was sharing with Ben and Lori, uh, the police uh, deputy sheriffs or uh, anyways, the authorities in Maryland had to do a special uh, public service announcement and, and on the public service announcement, asked people if they would please wear their clothes when they were checking their mail. Yeah, what? What is wrong? What's happened to people since they've been confined? What is what is going on with with all this? Anyways, uh, again, the Bible tells us uh, a merry heart is like good medicine. So we need to. As bad as all it's been has been, we need to somehow uh, even look at children or uh, just the simple things in life, be thankful and, and maybe laugh a little bit and know that as hard as this time is, that the Lord <clears throat> Jesus Christ is going to get us through. You know, I've had uh, uh, some things asked me also, and I just want to share a couple things that, that I actually even uh written down and uh, one of the things that people coming up to me in the grocery store and so forth or <clears throat> people know that I'm a pastor ask me uh, this and that is uh, Dallas what do you think about these churches uh, that are meeting right now and what do you think about that because really uh, we know what God's word says that we are to obey authorities here's my thought on that here's what I believe I'll always go back to the Bible and as long as it's temporary and we want to do as under shepherds of, of being the under shepherd of Jesus, we are to watch over the flock. And as long as we are listening to the, our health leaders and our president to uh, be careful and please abide by what we're saying right now, uh, we need to do that. And so that's what we're doing at City Church and we're waiting hopefully soon that we can meet together again. If it was permanent, Yes, then we would have to break that law and say, hey, we're going to meet as a church. But this is just temporary. And again, this is for the health and the safety of our people and especially of our older people. And we want to be so careful to watch over them at this time. So that's my answer that, yes, this is temporary. We need to obey, or if you will say it, and say it in that way, we need to just listen to the authorities and hopefully soon praying that we can get back to worshiping as a church family. But if it would ever be permanent, uh, yes, I would have to break that along. Hopefully, hopefully that won't happen. So uh, that being said, then the other question is, are we... What, what's going on with everything in the world? Is is this the last days? So I started thinking about a series that I'd like to, to, to bring, and everybody feels like there's a darkness right now. And so I thought I'd bring a series called Last Days, Last Days Lights. In other words, they're the light of Jesus, even in the last days, even though we see where we're headed, there is still hope. And no matter how close we get the Lord coming back, as a believer, we have hope. No matter how dark things get, no matter what happens in your life, we have hope through the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to use an example, give you an example today out of the Old Testament. And I'm going to read, stop and read quite a few verses and then stop and, and start again. But we find the story, finally the children of Israel are, 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 are released under the rule of the iron fist of Pharaoh, and they're let go because of all the plagues that were against Pharaoh and all the people in, in uh, Egypt. And all those years they served them, and it was such a horrible time for the children of Israel. And finally, through the Passover, and, and the angel uh, came through that night, 
and we know the blood of the Passover and how that he passed over those that had the blood on the door that represented, we know that we celebrate Easter, the blood of Jesus on the cross at Calvary. And so we're going to read this story after that. Now they're released. Now they're in the desert. And Pharaoh has realized we've let these people go that are doing all our work. We need to go out, get them, and bring them back. So this is what he told his army. In verse 5 of chapter 14 of the book of Exodus, Now it was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this? Why have we let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariots and took his people with them. Also he took 600 choice chariots and all the chariots of Egypt with the captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of the Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He pursued the children of Israel out in the desert and the children of Israel went out with boldness. So the Egyptians pursued them, all the horses, chariots, Pharaoh, his horsemen, his army overtook them camping by the sea besides Philroth before Baal Zephron. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. In other words, they could see the dust. They could see them coming off in the distance. They had a couple days uh, walk that they were get, getting away. Remember, there's a couple million people, so this is taking quite a while to get there. They're getting close to the Red Sea. Uh, they're getting, they're looking, they're, they can even hear it, feel it on the ground. You see the, the dust of the armies coming towards them, and they say this to Moses. Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt so harsh with us to bring us out of Egypt? This is not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone. We may serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. Moses said to them, Behold, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation which he accomplished for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will see again no more forever. That The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace you know i couldn't help but think about what i'm hearing now in other words hold their peace in other words quit complaining could can i go back to being the way that it was can't we just go back even 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 though it was difficult can i go back that that can just go back to be the way it was and i'm hearing that so much that people want things now to go back the way that they used to be. And I'm here to share with you that as a believer, God has a new way that he's going to work in your life through this darkness. And even though things are not going to be the same, even though we might want to look back and go back to the way things used to be, I want you to be willing, as Moses said to the children of Israel, are you willing to trust the good Lord today? Can you trust him in such a way even as dark it is, it might be in your life right now. You're not sure of your job. You're not sure of your future of your children. What's going to change? How long is this going to go on to where we're going to see constant change in our society and loss of jobs and so forth? But as a believer, we can know that through Jesus, we always win. And we can know, as the scripture says, the Lord will fight for you. Quit complaining. I think that's a great reminder for us that we need to look at our lives right now and know that, okay, we're getting on the other side of this and we want to get back. Of course, everybody wants to get back to work and doing what they can. Of course we do. But at the same time, the Lord's saying, I've got something new for you to do. I'm going to complete what I've started in you. And that's what we've got to remember. And he continues, <clears throat> listen to what he says. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, to go forward. We're not going to go back. God wants us to know as believers to go forward. Don't look back. Go forward and whatever it is in your life right now, know that God has got something in store for you and me and all of us as believers. It's going to be even better if we can believe that because God 
will supply all of our needs and he will do abundantly, exceedingly above all that we could ever think or ask is what he's going to do in the future. Go forward. And he, listen to what he continues to say. Lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And this is what it, that God is saying to, to Moses. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And indeed, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow him. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army and his chariots and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh his chariots, and his horse and horsemen. Many of us know, we can remember the, the story that we saw on television growing up, the Ten Commandments, and we see the waters that go back and the children of Israel walk across on dry land. And then, the, and then as they get across, Moses then stretches his arms out again, and, and then the, the walls of water close back up and the, and the Pharaoh's army are, are destroyed. God does something else in this story that I believe it's often overlooked and that we forget. Listen to what he says that he will do and what he does for the children of Israel. The angel of God who went before the camp of Israel. In other words, the angel of the Lord went before them. He was showing them to go forward. He was going to be with them. No matter where they were going in the desert, he was going to guide them. When before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before them and stood behind them. And so it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Thus it was, listen to this, thus it was a cloud of darkness to Pharaoh's army. But God's power the Lord of hosts, the King of kings was there. There was darkness on one side. Listen to what was on the side of the Israelites. Thus it was a cloud of darkness to the one, and it gave light by night to the other. As we look at last day's light, I want you to think about the armor of light. The armor of light that we have through Jesus Christ. I, I, let me put it to you this way. As you go back, here, God was leading them out, whatever was ahead of them, but now danger was coming behind them. He says he will be our front guard and our rear guard, no matter what you and I face. So he goes, knowing that the danger is now coming upon them from behind, that the, the children of Israel were probably maybe 100, 200 yards away from where Pharaoh's army was. But Pharaoh's army didn't know where they were because God caused the darkness to come upon their army. And at the same time on this side was complete light for the children of Israel. And God tells us that he did that all those hours that he was drying up the land that they would cross over the Red Sea. All those hours he kept the light even in the night to where they would be warm and that they could see. At the same time, it was so dark, Pharaoh couldn't move. That is amazing to me what God is showing us. What's he showing us today? In the midst of this darkness that we face so much uncertainty where it's dark, if we put on the armor of God, there is great light for our future as believers. Listen to what he says. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Thus it was a cloud of darkness to the one, and it gave light by night to the other. So the one did not come near the other all night. Isn't that amazing? To think no matter what the devil tries to do to you, they were there to kill and to destroy the children of Israel. They couldn't do it because God's hand the Lord of hosts, the King of kings, was their rear guard. The back was darkness, and the front was warmth and complete light. In all this uncertainty, I want you to know there is darkness out there. Everywhere we, we look, there is hurting. There is people not sure what's going to happen. 
we don't have to fear. We know when God is on our side, we are more than conquerors through Christ. We can see the unseen, and that's what he wants you to know today. When you and I don't know what to do, when we can't see with our physical eyes, know that the spirit that he's given within us, the Holy Spirit, illuminates through the power of his word, which is a light to our path, a lamp to our feet. That spirit, which is the sword, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. That's a weapon. This weapon that we have ignites in our spirit. And no matter how dark it is with this physical eye, we can have peace because we're seeing the unseen world and trusting him and knowing that he is our front and rear guard and he will always protect us. Continues. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went to the midst of the sea on dry ground and the waters were a wall to them on the right hand and on the left hand. The Egyptians pursued and went after them in the midst of the sea and all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen. So it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians to the pillar of fire and the cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians. He took off their chariots, wheels, so that they drove them with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. You know, we have the greatest military in the world. And whether it's uh, in part of our military and the army, we have army rangers, we have Navy SEALs. And something that they do is this, they go into enemy territory and they are there and they can actually see the unseen. And what do they do? They are seeing a world behind enemy lines that we can't see. And they call back. They call back to someone on a button <clears throat> in the Air Force <clears throat> or with a drone. And there is someone back there that all they have to do is radio to, this is where the enemy is. And they go with that backup and they strike the enemy. Why? Because we have someone that is fighting for us. God fights for us. He is the one that goes behind enemy lines, and he is always there fighting for us, even when we don't know it. We don't know in the military what they're doing most of the time. But that unseen world that we live in, that they can see, that we can't see, they protect us. And I want you to know today, you might be walking through dry ground, you see the walls of water on both sides, I want you to know you're going to get to the other side. And I want you to know that God, no matter how long it takes, he's going to get you there. And I want you to know there's something new that's going to happen. No matter what it might be, that armor of light that you have on, you can always see in the unseen world. This word is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path with the Holy Spirit as believers that he's given us. So let's finish the story. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. Not so much as one of them remained, but the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall to them to the right and to the left. So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant, Moses. Now I challenge you as a believer, been a believer a while, look back on, in, a, in a good way on something that you can remember that the Lord came through only in a way that he could come through. You couldn't see it. <clears throat> you didn't know how it was going to happen. If you'd have thought about it a hundred times, you would have never thought the Lord would have done it that way. 
the Lord fights for us. And that armor of light in, in this last days, the light that we have is a miracle. He lets us see in the unseen world. And he shows you and I how to go forward, even though the enemy is all around us. He gives us light. And that light gives us warmth and security that we know Jesus is in control. And you'll have that victory. I challenge you. Go back on a time of the Red Sea in your life and say, you know, look how the Lord watched over me here and watched over me there. It says that they put up memorial stones in the middle of the sea and also on the shore on the other side so their children would always remember what God has done for them. It's time that we talk to our kids and our families about what is going on and how that we know that God is going to get us through. In this time of darkness, that we're with each other so much as loved ones that we talk in that way, that we pray in that way, that we know that we have a future. Let me share with you just one more verse today. It's found in the book of Romans chapter 13 and verses 11 and 12. And do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. You know, when we go to bed at night, and, and it's talking about the night there, isn't it amazing that everybody has a different uh, way of, of going to bed, how they got to be comfortable, they got to have you know, the, 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 so many blankets or no blankets or the heat's got to be hot or cold or, or if you're snoring, you got to go in the other room, you know, whatever it might be. You got to be comfortable, right? But I want to look to you in a different way that we get comfortable in such a way and the things in the darkness at night that we get comfortable with sin. We get comfortable with that's the way it's always going to be. Or, or complaining is the children of Israel. We get comfortable in such a way that we don't know how the Lord's going to do this and we complain. And, and that's a sin. God wants us to so believe. He says to, to throw off the, the works of darkness. And I couldn't help but think of, of a story because talking about that armor of light and how that we can see into the unseen world. And, and maybe you're watching this today and you're thinking about your life. And you're thinking, oh man, I'm going to, you know, the, the Lord's punished me in, in some way that I'm, <clears throat> I'm not going to have a job and, and, and this has happened and that's happened. I, I want to encourage you in something. Because many of us have, have failed in life and, and, and that's why we come to Jesus to ask for forgiveness. And to know that we have hope in him. And he wants us to see in the unseen world the armor of light. In these last days, he quickens us to live a certain way, living right living, the righteousness. I couldn't help but think about the story of Samson. If you think of Samson, he what did he do? He always dabbled in sin, even though he had the strength of the Lord, the strongest man ever in the Old Testament. Probably next to Jesus Christ, he was the strongest man ever to live. And he lived in the Old Testament, and the Lord says you will always have your strength as long as you never cut your hair. Now, it was a simple commandment that he gave him. Well, what did he do? He went with, uh, if you will, into uh, a harlot, if you will, in another country because he wanted to be live that lifestyle. And he continued to be tempted by Delilah because she wanted to know because of the Philistines wanted to overtake him. And they would give her so much money and, and put her in a certain place in society if she could find out how Samson had his strength because he would always overthrow the Philistines and Israel was always saved through that. Samson would continue to be teased over and over and over again back and forth with her, back and forth, back and forth. Oh, this is where my strength is, and this is where my strength is. 
and he would say one thing and another, and then she would try that, and, and she would tell the Fliss as they'd come in, and he would break the binds of, of whatever it might be, of, of uh, cords or all these different things they thought where his strength was, and she was so upset. See, he dabbled with sin long enough. He got comfortable with it in the darkness. He got comfortable with her, and he finally told her where his strength was. We're not careful. The devil knows. He knows, he knows us. And if we're not careful, he'll put us out there long enough, the man or with a woman and think, you know, this is okay, nothing's changing. I can do this sin and I can think everything's okay. And all the while, the devil's lying to you. And he lies to me, he lies to all of us. He's the author of confusion. And so I want you to know today, what happened? They cut Samson's hair off because Samson finally told Delilah, my strength is in my hair. They came in, they cut his hair off while he was sleeping, sleeping and he jumped up when they went to, to grab him. And it says in God's word, he didn't know the spirit had left him. Sometimes we don't realize God's spirit is working in a great way. And sometimes Jesus is not right there because we're living in that darkness. But God wants you to know, no matter what you've done, no matter where you are in life, there's forgiveness. What did they do? They tied him up, they took him away. The Bible says that his strength was gone, so they plucked his eyes out. It's a horrible thought. They put him in a grinding millstone to go round and around and around all the rest of the days of his life. The only thing, though, that they had forgotten, God is a God of mercy, and he is a God of forgiveness, and he is a God of grace. See, the, the Philistines were, were laughing and drinking. <clears throat> Years would go by, and finally, his hair grew out. Well, I say, well, they would know that to cut it again. You know what? You know why they didn't cut it again? <clears throat> because they thought his God had forsaken him. But God doesn't forsake you as a believer. You might have to start over again. But I want you to know that through his grace and his love, that he will always be your rear guard and he will go before you and he will forgive you, guide you, and he will light your path again. The Bible says Samson's hair began to grow. It might have been over a period of a few years, but his hair got long and they thought his God had forsaken him. I want you to listen to me today. You might think this, this is some type of punishment that what is happening, that losing your job or what your future is or, or your health. I, I don't know what you're going. I, I want you to know God's not punishing you in that way. But I want you to know that his grace is sufficient. I want you to know that he loves you today. The Bible says as his hair began to grow, God was still with him. I know many, many times in that place of prison, Samson had many, many talks with the Lord and God forgave him. He got a little young man and he said, he knew his strength was back. And he said, would you take me? to where they're parting, this huge hall, this, the, the, where all these pillars were. He said, would you take me into that hall and take me to the strongest pillars that hold the whole, the whole uh, banquet center up? And as they were all parting and being drunk and totally deterred against the true and living God, the Bible tells us that Satan, with his eyes plucked out, what could he do? He could still see in the unseen world. I want you to know today, no matter where you're at, no matter what's happened, no matter what's done, God is a God of forgiveness and grace, and he loves you. And you can start over again, and you can know that he will still be gracious and forgiving, and you can see still in that unseen world. It says in God's word that Samson killed more people of wickedness in the last day of his life as he pushed those pillars out and that, that big banquet center and hall came tumbling down, all those people were killed that were so wicked. He killed more in one day than he did all of his life. I want you to know, no matter where you are, 
no matter what you've done. I want you to know that God loves you. And no matter how dark your past might be, Jesus is the light of the world. And what he does for you and for me, he forgives us. And he shows us even in this dark time, in these last days we live, he, he challenges, cast off the works of wickedness, of darkness, and put on the armor of right living. And it will shine in such a way that he will anoint your path. And watch what he'll do to this dark time that we live in. He's forgiven us. He guides us. He directs us. And he will fight for you. And he will fight for me. That's how much he loves us. No matter what the enemy tries to do, he, Jesus is in front of us. And when he needs to protect us, he goes behind us. And he confuses the enemy. And he lights our path. That's the God that we serve today. In these last days that we live in, look to him. Know that we have the armor of light and we can see in that unseen world as the Holy Spirit lights this up and gives us exactly what we need for what we can't see in the United States, in the world, and what's going to happen in these last days. You and I can have peace because we know Jesus is always going to show us and give us the spirit of wisdom, the hope of glory, Christ in you and in me. That's who we serve today. If Let me talk to you just for a minute. I've been talking mainly to believers today. But if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, maybe you've not come to him because you say, you know, I've done this, I've done that. He forgave Samson. He'll surely forgive you. And even though Samson couldn't see any more of this world, he could see in the unseen world. And right now, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit speaking to you, you're beginning to see the unseen world. Beginning to see that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and he rose from the grave. And all you have to do, the Bible says, by faith. By faith, we believe in our heart. And we pray with our mouth that we confess Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for our sins. Will you pray that prayer with me right now if you don't know Jesus, if you want hope, if you want to see your future in heaven forever and you have an unbelievable life. As Jesus said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. You should pray this prayer. Jesus, forgive me, a sinner. I believe that you're God's son. I believe you died on the cross for all of my sins. And right now, Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me for all of my sins. I believe you shed your perfect blood on the cross of Calvary for me. And Jesus, from this day forward, help me to live by your resurrection power. And Lord, you'll light my path till you take me home in these last days that we live in. In Jesus' name, amen. We'd love to hear from you at City Church, and we'll put that up in just a minute, the way you can give or you can contact us. And as we always say, <clears throat> hopefully we'll be back soon as a church family at City Church. And God's people said always, always, always that we know that we have hope in him. The God's people at City Church says amen and amen. Thanks for worshiping with us today.